Good afternoon, Mr. Brown. Good afternoon. How are you Justina? doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm okay. Fine. So my first question today is how, what was your first retail business that you went into? Okay. So the first retail business I had was buck and a half video store. That was a small video store in French Quarter. Um, and yeah, it was called Buck and a Half Video. I just wanted to make an extra buck and a half. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. And how did you come about doing this business? And how did you expand it to make more than a buck and a half? So what happened was I used to have a lot of VHS cassette. Um, I, I think those people who are under the age of 20 probably wouldn't know what a VHS tape is. <laughs> But back in the, in the early 90s and late 80s, it was a big thing. And they had the VHS. They used to have the Beta Max and then they had the VHS. So I used to buy a lot of them, all the different shows, Eddie Murphy's, you know, the Richard Pryor comedy shows, wrestling, action shows. And then what happened is I had such a collection. I think I had like almost three, 350 to 400 tapes. And I was in a, a nice, you know, nice size one bedroom apartment. And I started running out of space. <laughs> and I said, with all these movies I have, I could sell them. But then if I sell them, it's just a one time sale and then they use. People don't want to buy used VHS tape because they could be tangled up, they could be worn out, they could be damaged on the inside. So what I'll do, I'll just I'll just rent them for a dollar fifty a piece. And you know, and I'll just call it, so you, I, I couldn't really call it a dollar fifty video. So I went, oh, a buck, at the, the same time, I think 50 cents was just kind of starting to make a name for himself. And I was like, okay, he's 50 cents, I'm a buck and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how the name came about, buck and a half video. And then, so I, I, this was in French Quarter. So there was a retail shop, there was a retail space on the other side, they had laundry. Or, um, I think they had a bakery, you know, little things. But there was an empty space. And I think I got a space for like $350 a month. And so that was uh, by Harry, Harry Arnell. And so I rented the space. It was like first month deposit, uh, security deposit, and then first month rent and security deposit. So I said, fine, you know. And I rented the space and I, I say buck and a half video. I rent the videos for $1.50, which is a buck and a half. And I call it buck and a half video. That was it. <laughs> okay. And um, after you established the business, where did the business go from there? And what so, was the conclusion of this business? So what I did after I opened the, the, the business, I was busy with some other stuff. So I hired um, some of the young kids that was hanging around. So I had Ives work for me. I had... Um, had another kid, gosh, I forget his name. He was from Dominica originally, and he grew up in French Quarter. Eddie, I think his name was, yeah. Eddie, so I had Ives, I had Eddie, then I had Brian. Um, Brian came later, on the later end, and then my girlfriend at the time, Heather France, she also used to work for, for, for me as well. And so, cause it was like a little part-time, you know, kind of thing. And then new movies went for like two dollars or two dollar fifty, but all of the you know the old show that I had was a buck and a half, and it did pretty good. So three of the local kids, oh Ikmar also used to help out, but he was like ten years old. He used to come around, hang around the video store, and actually his his dad was my landlord um, in the apartment, and so. I said, you know, when you come over here, you got to do something. You can't just come over here, hang out in the store and don't do anything. So when he come over, I used to have him uh, pack the movies back on the shelf that people returned. And, and he still works with me today also. Now he's a grown man. I think he's almost 40. Um, but back then he was like 10 years old. So we're talking 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. And then Brian also still worked for me. I've worked for me for a long time. And then what I ended up doing, I think I had the store for like three or four years. And when I wanted to get rid of the store, I was going to close it down because things just started to kind of slow down after a while. And then DVDs had started to come in slowly. And um, so there was a big conversion. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to put more money in the place. I don't have the time to even do it. And this was closer to 99. So, this, so I guess I had the store for probably like five years. 
And and so Brian was working for me at the time, and he said, "See, give me a chance, man. Come on, I want to do it. I'll take it over." I said, "You know, yeah. If you want it, you know, you can have it because I'm, I'm, otherwise I'm going to just close close it." And he's like, "No, you can sell me the store, da da da." And then we talk about it a few times, and then I end up selling him the store for the salary he was making over one year. So I said, "Listen, okay." You're making, I think he was making about 500 bucks a month. Or maybe, let me, I think it's like 300 bucks a month. And I knew what the store was producing. So I said, okay, give me $500 every month for one year and the store is yours. And we shook hands on it. And 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 once once the year was over, um, I signed over the papers to him. And that was in, I think, 1999 or 2000. So 24 years later, he still has the store. But it's now called the video block, okay. and now it's all DVDs and movies on a thumb drive. Um, a few times I got, I think it's thirty movies for five bucks. I think I'm not sure. Um, so Brian, um, right now at the video block, you could get thirty movies on a stick, and you could go home, plug it into your computer, and watch all your more movies. I don't know the price. But you could contact the video block in French Quarter and you could get DVDs, you could get games, and you could get 30 movies on a thumb drive. Yeah. Okay. So I have one additional question. Okay. So after you, you started the business, you grew the business a little bit, you sold the business. So basically that chapter is kind of concluded. What yeah. would be just one life or business lesson, lesson that you learn from that particular business? Oh, simple. Um, any business you want to start, you always start grassroots. And grassroots is family, neighbors, friends, the community you live in. So that business did not grow outside of French Quarter, but I started off again, I used to loan movies to different people in the apartments for free. Once I got the idea to open a store, of course they start. They have to start to pay for it. So, so that's where uh, you know neighbors, and then friends. Basically, everyone I knew, they came to the video store. They rented a video, and then the community, the community of French Water, and and yeah. So, grassroots. Um, I I I did an interview the other day where I said business doesn't require investors and bank loans. And that's what most people think. So basically that business was born from my bedroom with my my excess of VHS tapes and for space I didn't have to keep collecting them. <laughs> so and that business was born. It lasted for like five years, I think. And then it was sold to someone who have it now for over 20 years. So there you go. And it began just as a little gimmick for to make an extra buck and a half. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a good lesson to learn yes yes um, most of the things that you see today that is big and I'll tell you in the future about other businesses I started none of my businesses started off with a master plan they all started off very simple very basic but once I got into it and I see what can happen what it can do I just went along with it and and, and it just grew because that's what we are we are born we're not able to the only thing we do is poop eat and cry and then we learn to do everything else. We learn to crawl, we learn to walk, we learn to touch everything and jack things off the table and break them and, and scream. And, and then we learn to, to, to eat hard food and we learn to party ourselves and we learn to do everything. And that's the way business starts. It starts from that initial idea and then you get into it and then you start seeing, oh, if I do this, if I do that, if I do that, if I do that, and then you just grow from there. And the sky is the limit. Well, thank you for this interview. <laughs> You're welcome. Have a good day. All right. Okay. To get more of my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click on notification bell so you can be notified when I drop new content.